Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe, and click on notifications so you don't miss out on the fun. In our first story, a Choosing Beggar family drop by for a little visit, and then they won't leave. Let's jump right in. This took place when I was nine, which was six years ago, so it may be a bit fuzzy. My dad had a friend from middle school who now had a family and was going to visit North Carolina for a vacation. They invited themselves over to my grandparents' house to stop by for a few minutes before continuing on their trip. This is how they ended up staying for two days before we kicked them out. So my dad had a friend from middle school, let's call him Mike. Mike lived in New Jersey near my father and they were friends and went to school together. So it makes sense that he and his family would come to visit because they haven't seen my father in a while. Here's the thing, my dad wasn't there. He was in Colorado on his own vacation to visit his other friend. So why would they still come visit? This baffled us, but it's great to have company since we lived in the middle of nowhere and had this big house all to ourselves. Here are the characters in this story. There's me, my mom, my sister, my grandmother, my grandfather, my dad's friend Mike, my dad's friend's wife Karen, Mike and Karen's son who is 12 is Kevin, and Mike and Karen's daughter is 16, Kavina. It was time for the family to arrive. We still didn't know why they were coming since the road to North Carolina was one hour out of the way, unless they were trying to get a free vacation using our house's amenities, pool, jacuzzi, etc. They came here in their little car with Kavina driving, almost hitting our car in the driveway. They came inside and within five minutes everyone was in the pool. There was barely any introduction or manners, they just got into the pool basically. After being in the pool for a while, I got to know Kevin. Kevin was a special guy, a classic Kevin. Since I was bored out of my mind since I didn't have any friends with me, I hung out with him for a bit. We played Minecraft and did other stuff, and he kept on trying to pick up my sister, age 5 at the time. My mother politely said, please do not pick her up, she is too heavy for you to carry. He didn't care, so he did it a few times after she asked him not to anyway. So yeah, that was Kevin. Not the brightest guy, I didn't really know Kavina that well. It was nearing 6pm. Karen and Mike were out of the pool and they were talking stuff about being hungry. My grandfather asked if they had lunch. Karen said, no, but the kids had fruit snacks on the way here. Seriously? Feed your damn kids and don't expect dinner if you told us that you were going to stop by for a few minutes. We ended up ordering Domino's. Since we live in literally the middle of nowhere, we had to drive 20 minutes to the nearest Domino's and pick up pizza. I always rode with my grandfather in the car because I really enjoyed it. On the way there, he was getting a bit pissed off because I'm sure a 64 year old man doesn't want to be picking up pizza for a family he barely knows and has hardly seen in the last 20 years. We got home and ate the pizza. Kevin and I played some Minecraft in my Minecraft world and yes, he exploded my Minecraft city with TNT. Really, I didn't particularly care. I wasn't a hardcore Minecraft gamer back then. We watched a mediocre movie and went to bed. The whole Choosing Beggar family refused to sleep in rooms with any of us. We had to rearrange the whole bedroom layout, which was a pain in the butt, but we eventually went to sleep. I woke up at the right time of 7am. I look out my window to see the action had already started. Kevin and Kavina were in the pool already, while Mike and Karen were in the jacuzzi. It's 7am. I walked downstairs to see my grandfather, who was fuming. He hadn't even known that they were sleeping over. My grandfather, my mom, and my grandmother were in the kitchen formulating a plan. What they came up with was to say that they had to pick up a new dishwasher in the city, which was about 50 miles away. That should force the Choosing Beggar family out. What did the choosing beggars say? We'll come with you, it's no problem. 
No, you're gonna have to leave now, said my grandfather, who was actually really pissed by this time. After two more hours of wasting our time, they finally left. They came back twice because they forgot stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if they had stolen a few things too. We drove to the seafood market and Dunkin' Donuts for some food. We leave the parking lot and see their car driving away from North Carolina. My grandmother yells, everybody duck, as their car passed us, since they knew that the city we were supposed to be going to was the other way down the road. Sorry if the story was so long, I even cut some things out. This wasn't even half of their antics. What does this story mean? Make sure that choosing beggars leave your house at the time that they promise to leave. Story 2 shows us a choosing beggar who wants to go back on a deal. Fine, two can play that game. So back in the 90s, I made my own PC from scratch for the first time, and in the process I accidentally ended up with a box of hard drives instead of just one. I guess whoever picked the order messed up and I ended up with 12 hard drives instead of one. I've worked in a storehouse myself, so I know it is pretty common for people to make mistakes while fulfilling orders. For example, to take a whole box with 3, 4, or even 10 items in them instead of just taking one piece. I'm no saint, I'm just a poor student, so I thought, why not sell these and make some spending money? I use something similar to Craigslist, but a local version in my country, where people can sell new and used items. I posted there asking for a price 20% under the usual lowest price on a hard disk drive and I typed that I had a few to sell. I also stated I'm young and have no car so they would have to come to me or we could meet up in the nearest big city to me where I went to school if that was more convenient. Calls come in and I have 4-6 to six interested buyers. I note down their names and how many they want to buy and the time and date for meeting up. A few people do try to negotiate on the price, saying they are coming from a long distance away. I told them the price ain't going down any further. It's already 20% below market price and they are new, unused hard drives in the original packaging. So no thanks. I've got plenty of people interested, either you pay up or no deal. I get some orders and arrange the dates and times for pickup. I sell the majority of these with no hassle whatsoever. People pay and are happy to get a great deal on a brand new hard drive. Until Choosing Beggar shows up. First of all, he arrives two hours late. I'm already sitting gaming and doing other stuff. I'm home alone, parents at work, when the phone rings. This guy is lost. Okay, no problem. My house is in the countryside so it can be hard to find. I tell him to find my neighbor's house, which we have a shared driveway with. Within a minute, he finds it. By then, I've gotten my shoes, coat, and the last two hard drives he was interested in, and I'm out the door. As I got to my driveway, I already had a feeling that something was off. Beat up old car, it looks fine, but old. Him wearing a suit like he has millions, cheap watch, very expensive shoes. In other words, this guy is all over the place. When we shake hands, he flashes me one of those fake smiles that sadly, I've seen too many times already in my life. The first thing he says, it was really a long trip and I've spent a lot of time trying to find this address. Yeah, a whole minute. I was just standing there and doing nothing. We had already had this discussion over the phone. Are those the hard drives? I hold them up so he can see them clearly. Yes, they are. As promised, they are in their original packaging. Do you have the cash? I think I should get a discount. You didn't tell me that your place was this hard to find. Well then, I've got another buyer or two who would be very happy to buy them. I told you the price and you must know that they are already cheaper than the retail price. Considering your expensive suit and other things, I don't think you are even remotely as poor as my family and I are. So, on that note, have a nice day. What? You have to sell me those hard drives. I'm already here. You can't go back on the deal. That's a funny thing to say. 
Since you've already gone back on the deal by offering me a lower price than we previously agreed on, so can I. You can still buy them, but now they are only 3% under the retail price. He's now going tomato red in the face, swearing at me and threatening lawsuits, etc. I wait and after he runs out of air and we have a moment of silence, every time you do that, I'll just increase the price. Now it's 15% above the retail price. To this day, I'm quite sure I remember seeing steam coming out of his ears. He starts screeching again and I just turn around and walk back towards my house. He followed me a bit behind, still yelling. As I got to my house, I looked back at him, standing there, breathing hard, and I just can't help myself. What about 25% over retail? I might have had a little smirk on my face. He just turns around and stomps off like a three-year-old that didn't get his bag of candy. He gets into his car and drives away. As I said earlier, I already had a bunch of interested people. I phoned the next person on my list, a girl who happened to want two hard drives and was ecstatic. She even came the same day to get them. While we made our transaction, I told her this story. We both laughed and she left with two hard drives and a smile. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then please hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.